Hey, we're Anne and Jennifer Smith with Marriage After God. Helping you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. And today we're going to answer some questions from the community. Welcome to the Marriage After God podcast, where we believe that marriage was meant for more than just happily ever after. I'm Jennifer, also known as Unveiled Wife. And I'm Aaron, also known as Husband Revolution. We have been married for over a decade. And so far, we have four young children. We have been doing marriage ministry online for over seven years through blogging and social media. With the desire to inspire couples to keep God at the center of their marriage, encouraging them to walk in faith every day. We believe that Christian marriage should be an extraordinary one, full of life, love, and power that can only be found by chasing after God. Together. Thank you for joining us on this journey as we chase boldly after God's will for our life together. This is Marriage After God. Hey, thanks for joining us, Marriage After God family. Uh, We're so excited about this episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, We just want to invite you, if you haven't done so already, to leave us a star rating and review. Uh, Wherever you're listening, uh, would you just find where to leave the review and click a star? And also leave us a text review. We love reading those. And it also helps other people find the podcast. Um, All the podcast apps use different algorithms, and it's based on how many downloads and how many reviews you get. So uh, that would really help us. Another thing we're really excited to share with you is that Aaron and I love giving you guys free stuff. And we created a free download, something super easy for you to get. Just go to marriageprayerchallenge.com and you can sign up for uh, the Marriage Prayer Challenge, which is really cool. If you feel like you need inspiration in your prayer life, especially for marriage, uh, this is just a great resource and tool that we created for you. Yeah, the, there's thousands of couples that have already signed up for this prayer challenge. And what you'll get is you'll get 30, uh, 31 emails over the next 31 days giving you prayer prompts every single day to remind you to pray and to encourage you what to pray for, for your spouse. Uh, it's really fun. And we just, we desired to give you uh, an encouragement in your prayer life because we believe that praying marriages are powerful marriages. Yep. So go get that. It's marriageprayerchallenge.com. It's completely free. And also, uh, yeah, there's another free download that we had. I just want to let you know about, we don't talk about it as much, but it's called date night conversations. It's 52 uh, date night conversations that you, uh, can go on your dates over the next year and you pick one of the questions and you discuss it over your date night. Sometimes we, or all 52, or that'd be a long could, day. that would be a long day. <laughs> hey, that might be an awesome day. But the idea is that you would have a new topic to dig into, to go in deeper into your, your life and your, and your future and what God's doing in your marriage and what he wants to use you for. Uh, so we created that. You just go to date night conversations.com. It's a completely free download. Uh, go check that out today as well. Yep. Again, we just made these for you guys. So if you have heard us talk about them in the past and you just haven't got around to going to get them, go do that today. All right. So uh, this is just a fun episode on some questions that we received from the community. Yeah. I posted it to Instagram and we got a lot. Yeah. We got so many. They were really great. And uh, the goal was we just would go through some of them and answer them to the the best of our ability. Um, Some of them are personal, some of them are spiritual, uh, but it'd be fun. And our our, our idea would be, um, if we love this, if you love this, we might do this uh, once a month. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. And so if you're interested in asking us a question, make sure you're following us on Instagram. You can either follow us at Marriage After God or at Unveiled Wife, which is my wife's page, or at Husband Revolution, which is mine. And be on the lookout for a, a story where we ask you to leave us a question. What I really love about this concept of doing a a whole podcast dedicated to your guys' questions is we know for sure we'll be tackling topics that you're interested in, but they may be topics that don't necessarily need a full episode dedicated to it so we can quickly answer it. And um, we're just we're just really excited about this idea. And so we're going to do this today. And uh, if you guys are excited about it, share that with us. If you if you like the way that this has turned out, uh, share it with us so that we know and yeah, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to doing this. And if there's any uh, specific question and answer that you really loved and would like an expanded episode on, let us know. Yeah. Send us a message through at support at marriageaftergod.com or send us a message on Instagram. Uh, we, we're active on Instagram, so. Okay, so something big is happening this week. Well, tomorrow is like a special day <laughs> um, of thanks, I think. Yeah, Thanksgiving yeah. is tomorrow. And uh, I love Thanksgiving. I just love. Why the, do you love Thanksgiving? Well, I love the food. I really do. I love getting together with family, and just um, just celebrating specifically what we're thankful for. I would say this. Here's a bonus answer to a question that no one asked. <laughs> um, wh- what's something that me and you love? And it's food. We love food. 
And so the holidays that like when we think of, when I think of Thanksgiving, I'm thinking like, oh man, yams, <laughs> turkey. I'm thinking of all these good things. Uh, so in, in light of our love of food, what thing are you looking forward to the most on the table? Hmm, that's a good question. That's a hard question on Thanksgiving because there's so many good okay, things. Okay, put it in an order of uh, like favorites. Well, I definitely love pumpkin pie. You that's can have good... that first. I mean, it's it's Thanksgiving. Why not? Start um, with pumpkin pie, work your way to the proteins. I know a lot of people like ham. I know, Aaron, you're smoking a ham this year, which... No, you're turkey. Excited. Smoking a turkey. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I was going to say... I do love ham, though. <laughs> I was going to say... So many people love turkey. Aaron's smoking a turkey this year, but I, am, yeah. I prefer ham. <laughs> it's true. That's we should. I should smoke a ham one year. That'd be good. Um, but everyone wanted turkey, so we're doing a turkey. And I did one last year, and it was incredible. And it's just so traditional. So. Yeah, and so I'm gonna smoke a turkey again this year. It's gonna. I'm excited about that. So, Hopefully what's your favorite <laughs> item gonna be on the table? I've always loved yams. It's like my favorite Thanksgiving thing forever. Mm -hmm. And you make an incredible Aww. yam dish. Uh, it's like a well, we've we've get mixed recipes over the year, and we've ended up on one that we just love. It's mm -hmm. got like pineapple and like all this delicious stuff, and it. it's very sweet. It's almost like dessert. Mm -hmm. But there's another variation. I don't know if we're gonna do both of them, where we put ginger snaps on top. I did buy a small oh. box of ginger snaps just for you to have a little corner. Oh man, <laughs> I can eat like a whole tree. I don't like it. ginger snaps though; it's not as good to me. <laughs> oh, I but love it. I started with dessert. I, maybe I shouldn't have started there, but um, one of my favorite things, and I feel like I'm really good at making it, it's my mom's recipe, but it's stuffing. You the do stuffing make good stuffing. It's really good. I put like bacon and sausage and all kinds you of stuff. You put everything in it. We should wrap yeah. it up in a burrito this year. What? I don't know. That sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Bacon, gross. sausage, stuffing. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we know that you guys are probably looking forward to Thanksgiving. Hopefully you are. Yeah. Um, and that is just going to be a sweet time with friends and family and and I don't think we should move on until I ask you and you ask me, what are you thankful for? Oh, that's a really good question. That's a big question because there's so much to be thankful for. And I, these are all bonus answers. I, <laughs> <laughs> I've been super thankful lately just for my family, like my like you and, mm -hmm. and the kids and um, our health. Um, there's been several families in our life and people that I follow that are just going through a really hard season of of health issues. And, yeah. um, it really breaks my heart, but they're going through it with such, um, faith, you know, mm -hmm. and, and being able to still lean on God and trust in God, which is a huge testimony and, and brings glory to him. Um, but it makes me super grateful, uh, for our family and just the health that we've experienced. That's a good one. Uh, I've been really thankful for our church community. Mm. Uh, it's, you have been really thankful. I feel like every Sunday you look at me and you're just like, well, yeah, this is so cool. we've started this new church now at a few months ago now, like seven, seven months, months ago, ago. Yeah. Not a few months ago, a while ago. And just the, the, the families that we're involved with and everyone's heart to grow and to be used and to encourage and to be biblical. And mm -hmm. this, it's been really cool seeing the Holy Spirit work in other people so much and just everyone being on the same page. Mm -hmm. uh, and even when awesome. you're when you're in a tight knit community like this, and the Holy Spirit's working in someone else's life, you get the impact of that because oh, yeah. it overflows, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, what's the the fruit on the tree for? It's for others to eat. So yeah, we get, we've been experiencing just tons of fruit in people's lives, mm -hmm. and it's just so sweet and good. And uh, it's been exciting. It's made me like excited about what's next in in life and in church and what God's doing. And mm -hmm. that's what I'm thankful for. Cool. Of course, other things. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 10 questions we're going to get through. Why don't okay. we just... And these are questions from the community. These so. are, yeah, I'm not going to say who said the question. Yeah, that's okay. Um, but these are questions directly from people yeah. in the community. So the first one is, what has challenged you most about doing ministry together? <laughs> uh, this is a good question. Well, I mean, according to our book, Marriage After God, our marriage is a ministry. So are right. they talking about like, the moment we said I do. I think they're talking about our online, <laughs> our writing, everything our, we do together. Yeah, those things. I'd say for me, it goes down to communication. So there's certain ways that I like to communicate and you're different than me. And I've noticed this, especially through the podcast, just that yeah. you say things differently. And sometimes I... We have to start over. Yeah. You're like, Aaron, we <laughs> why'd you say it like that? You yeah. threw me off. Yeah. Other times I just cringe and let it go. And I trust you and in, in the way that you lead us. But I would say just our differences in personality, our differences in the way that we say things and uh, being able to share it on the same platform has been really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. 
One of these days, we should just do a completely unedited episode. No way. I don't think they would appreciate that as much. <laughs> then they can hear the real behind the scenes. Uh, no, I, I, I think that's a, a big thing is communication because we do have different ways of mm-hmm. um, working and being. And uh, sometimes we even have different visions. Yeah. Um, not to say that we're not on the same page, but the way I would do something, you know, in general, yeah. you might do it, want to do it differently, but... Even just like co-writing our books, you know, like I would want to say something a specific way and, and you start out the chapter a certain way. And so like that vision you're talking about, mm-hmm. it's like you have one direction and I have another. And so being able to submit and yield our hearts to God and saying, God, what do you want in this? That's the only way we've been able to really right. bring our ideas and bring our vision and, and bring it into unity together. And it's also been cool to, to, uh, experience that, experience that and pursue that because where I'm weak, you have strengths and where you're you're weak. I have strengths. And when you, and this is, this is why we wrote the book, Marriage After God. Uh, if you haven't got a copy, plug, go get one today on Amazon. <laughs> right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is I would, um, especially in our writing styles, like I would write a certain way and then you'd go back through, I don't write very many stories or intimate details. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'd go back through and lace in mm-hmm. the story that needed to be there. Mm-hmm. And it like actually filled it out really well. So that was fun. Teamwork. Uh, yeah, teamwork. <laughs> the other thing that comes to my mind about being challenged in doing ministry together is recognizing that even though we're, you know, walking on this journey and submitting our lives to God and, um, you know, just really desiring to glorify him and everything that we do. And then realizing that we still have shortcomings and, and sin in our own life that hinders us at times. And then mm-hmm. we have to wrestle with that. You know, when like when we know we have to go do a podcast and record it or we know we have a book to write and there's conflict between us or we disagree on something when it comes to parenting. It's just that is so frustrating to me. That's one of my biggest challenges is, oh, now we have to go minister to others like this is so hard, but Mm -hmm. it's also so good and refining because it it does um, it challenges us in a way that gets us to the place where we need to be. Yeah. Like we just. I would say the other thing that has been really challenging is, uh, our, cause you, you made, you made a joke about our marriage being our ministry mm-hmm. and yes, we're, we're in a marriage ministry and that's kind of the focus of the things we talk about online and the books we write, but we're also married Yeah, and not, uh, and we, we had this issue early on of getting so involved in, in focused in the outward ministry and forgetting the inward ministry. Right. Um, and so that balance of, well, we, this feels like it might be getting in the way currently and we need to take a step back or mm-hmm. we need to adjust. Um, and so I feel like that balance of, um, you know, doing this ministry that other people see and making sure that internally our ministry to each other right. and to our children right. is just as strong, if not stronger than mm-hmm. what we're doing yeah. outwardly. Yep. Cool. Okay. So um, when should I finally change my last name? Which this is a funny question to me because I don't know if everyone knows this. <laughs> I was a Smith before I married you. So Aaron Smith. Yeah, I was a Smith and you were a Smith. Which made me really happy because I liked the last name Smith. It was really easy to well, write. Well, you wanted to keep it, yeah, which was awesome. I that did. was actually a prayer of yours before we even yeah, met. You're like, I want to keep my last name mm-hmm. and you got to. <laughs> yeah. So I um I didn't have to jump through hoops to change anything, but I I'm assuming that whoever's asking this question maybe just got married. Mm-hmm. or has been married for a little bit and they're wondering like, when should I do this? Yeah, I would, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be like sinful if you don't run and go change it like the, right away. But if there's a hard issue of like, you don't want to change your name, like you don't want to take your husband's name or your wife, I guess you wouldn't take your wife's name. If you don't want to take your husband's name, um, I would just check that hard issue and say, Lord, why, why am I holding on to this? Mm-hmm. Um, and we don't know all the reasons why some people no don't. Clue, yeah. I mean, we're just saying, if you are asking this question and you have a desire to change your last name, just do it. <laughs> yeah. And one, and for your husband's sake that, I mean, it just shows him that you want to be one with him. Like, no, I, I'm fine with taking your name because we're one. Yeah. And it's super uh, honoring yeah. to your husband. And if you feel, if you're kind of like stuck on, it just seems too hard or there's too many things I got to go fill oh, that, out and the do. actual logistics hey, of it. <laughs> you can do hard things. <laughs> so we tell our it. kids, <laughs> you could do hard things. <laughs> go do it. Okay. So, yeah. Question three. How distant are we allowed to be to in-laws when they are controlling? Mm. Okay. Okay. So I just want to share, first of all, that it's so important in marriage to be communicating your feelings in a, in a respectful way with your spouse 
mm-hmm. about in-laws. Like I wouldn't hold back um, things that you're dealing with, things that you're wrestling with, uh, ways that you feel when yeah, it comes again, in a to, respectful way. yeah, when it yeah. comes to your family, like even though they're your in-laws, they are your family. So be talking to one another about that. Um, I would also say, I, I feel like sometimes there's a uh, cultural way of thinking in this, any culture of their family. Therefore they have unlimited access because you, you would never push away family, like families, like they're special. They get this extra, um, you know, closeness. They get privileges that others don't, which is true in a sense, but you got to remember when you get married, you started a new family Mm -hmm. and the Bible tells uh, men specifically to leave and cleave to their wife, to leave Mm -hmm. their home, their family, to cleave to their wife, that you've created a new family unit. And that doesn't mean you just shun all your family, but if there's, if there are in-laws that are overstepping their boundaries and, and are acting in a way that is getting in between you and your spouse, that's just not okay. Mm-hmm. And you know what? So the question is, is how distant are we allowed to be? You're as a, you're allowed to be as distant as you need to be to get the boundary ac- across to your in-laws. Um, and sometimes it just takes having the hard conversation right away. Mm-hmm. Like what you're doing is not appropriate. And if you continue to act this way, you are going to push us away. And I want you to know why. Mm-hmm. Now, if we grow and change, we have grace. We have mercy. If you if if it's something that you are um, you're talking to the in-law right now, if it's something that you recognize and are willing to grow in and change yeah. and stop, then we're willing to to be patient and mm-hmm. walk with you and remind you, hey, that was, you're overstepping your boundary again. What if, what if they don't want to have those hard conversations, but they're willing to be distant? Like what, what would you say to them? I, I feel like you're just gonna, it, you're, you're running from probably the conversation that needs to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's someone being really like wrong and abusive, I feel like you need to do what's right for your family. Mm-hmm. And you sometimes you do need to cut people off. But if you're just avoiding that hard conversation because you don't like confrontation, you may be missing out on a huge yeah. opportunity of growth in your own heart that God wants to use through something like that. Or this. in your in-law. Yeah. But they might say, oh my gosh, I never even realized. Yeah, I want to grow. I want to change that. I love you guys. I'm not trying mm-hmm. to do that. You yeah. might have a breakthrough in the relationship. It could be huge for reconciliation. The other thing I want to say is sometimes we have um, this belief that the in-law is trying to be controlling Because maybe they're not meeting your expectations of them, or maybe Mm. they're not like your family. And so there's this conflict internally and you're wrestling and that person's not even trying to be controlling. You're just perceiving it that way. So, and maybe it could be stuff that you can overlook. That could be a heart check situation. Yeah. But if they are coming in and they're, you know, uh, getting your spouse to make decisions without your you know, without you being a part, if they're, if they're doing things that are destructive Mm -hmm. and hurtful, then that is absolutely like, just because their family doesn't give them a right to be able to be that way. You, you have the responsibility, especially the, the husband has to, to recognize these things and and say, we're going to set boundaries, healthy boundaries in a Mm -hmm. loving way for my family's sake. Yeah. Here's a word we all need to hear, especially with Thanksgiving coming and probably a lot of family interaction and in-laws being a part of the celebration uh, remember that they are people and they are gifts to us, mm-hmm. just like our spouse. And we need to respect that. God created people and relationship. And so we need to ask God, we need to go to him and say, God, how do you want me to love this person mm-hmm. today, tomorrow, the next day? And sometimes that means telling them the no. That means putting them aside and say, you know what? You need to work on something. Mm-hmm. And your heart could still be right towards them. Mm-hmm but that distance needs to happen. Or sometimes it's a lowering of your expectations for how holidays work and you just have to set yourself aside. Um, I do want to make a note. We actually have a whole episode dedicated to your biblical relationship with your Mm. in-laws. And so we'll put a link in the description for that. Uh, But it's, it was a while ago. I thought it was a fun episode. Cool. You should go check that out. Okay. Moving on. How do you keep your faith during the hard times and keep a positive mindset? So the first thing I thought when I saw this question and I, I hope no one takes it harshly. Um, when I hear someone say, how do you keep your faith during hard times? Our faith is is the, is knowing what God has said is true, regardless of what is going on. So if my faith is only there in the good times, what faith do I have? None. There is no faith. That's that. It takes no faith to trust God when everything's good. Now, I think it does take faith when everything's good, but it, it, the faith gets tested and played out mm-hmm. and becomes real when you need 
to trust God yeah. when you don't know what's next. That's the whole idea of faith. It's the hope yeah. for things unseen. So I was just going to read that because the first thing that came to my mind with this question is, what is faith? And Hebrews 11, one says, now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. And so when I think of hard situations, you know, people going through some really hard times, uh, you're, you have the assurance of what you're hoping for and you're, mm-hmm. you're putting your hope in Christ. You're putting your hope in God's will for you and for your family and for getting through whatever this hard time is. And that is what faith is. Yeah. And so I would, I would ask, I, I think of that, um, blind man on the road and he stops Jesus and Jesus says, do you believe I can heal you? And he says, I do believe, but help my unbelief. Mm-hmm. And so I would say, um, that your faith should remain intact even when you feel like you're doubting. And you you should say, Lord, give me more faith. Mm -hmm. Help my unbelief. Like, I I don't know how this is working, but I trust you. And so uh, my answer to it is, if if your faith dissolves in hardships, then it's not faith. Mm -hmm. So you need to reconcile that and and realize, no, my Lord is good. And even in the hard times, he's doing something and I trust him and he's good and he's going to take care of me. And he's, and he's still there. And I think of what Paul said, he said, I, I don't count the current struggles to be compared to the coming glory. Yeah, Like he, he says, like all of these things that are happening to me, the worst things that can happen to me are nothing to compare with the coming glory of Jesus Christ. When I'm going to be, when every tear is going to be wiped away, yeah. when my body's going to be made new and whole, when there's going to be no more pain and suffering, where, where there's a hope we're looking towards. Mm-hmm. That's what we have faith in. It is in, is in God and his uh, salvation Yeah, that's coming in Jesus Christ. You know, we're saved now, but we're also waiting yeah. for that coming salvation, the, the restoration of all things. That's so good. I want to um, make a note on this second part of the question because it says, and keep a positive mindset. Mm-hmm. I want to encourage everyone that God built us with a huge range of emotions and we feel deeply as human beings. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you're going through a hard time, you're going to feel some deep things. Could be sadness, could be whatever, whatever it is that you're wrestling. And we have to remember that God gave us those feelings to experience, Mm -hmm. but we still have to have self-control on them. So it's not just a matter of, yeah, I'm going through this hard time, but I got to stay positive and be have a happy face on because mm-hmm. you may not be able to experience that type of level of positivity in the midst of your hardship. And I just yeah, want to say, Job. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say it's okay to, to have different emotions other than mm-hmm. happiness going through a hard trial. Um, but you can still have joy. And I think faith produces that in us. Yeah. And, um, and even though we, we experience those really deep emotions, um, we can still express ourselves in a way that glorifies God. Yeah. And I would, I would change it. Um, you know, keeping your faith in the hard times will keep you, will, will produce a hopeful yeah. mindset. And you know what I see in friends that I, you know, I mentioned earlier, family, families that are going through really hard trials with we know quite a few right sick now. kids and things like that. You know, they'll send out an update and then, at the end, they just sum it up with how much they love God, that they're trusting in Him. They'll share a Bible verse. Now, and they'll also rejoice that through this trial, other people are seeing the light of God in them. Yeah, nurses, doctors, mm-hmm. and so when I I don't think of that as being just a positive mindset. I see that as a testimony of their faith and their hope being on something yeah. so much greater. Yeah, let me read this. First Peter one three through nine says this. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials. So that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now, now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Mm, so good. And that's kind of a summary of like my thought on this is, yeah the tested genuineness of your faith, which is more precious than gold, Mm -hmm. (laughs) the tested genuineness. 
though we have various trials and, and things that come up in our life and suffering and pain, we look forward to that coming salvation mm -hmm. <laughs> and obtaining the results of our faith. Mm -hmm. And so I just want to encourage you that in those hard times is exactly when your faith is the most necessary, mm -hmm. when you need to lean and go on God more. Mm -hmm. So I hope that was encouraging. Question number five, what would you say the hardest part of transitioning to parenthood is? And I, and I think this was a person who's about to have their first child. Uh, the first thing I thought of was having no idea what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But for me as a mom and having experienced babysitting and siblings and, you know, working in a preschool, I had the thought that I knew what I was doing only until I actually gave birth and then quickly realized that I didn't have a clue. <laughs> right. Your own child's totally different than someone else's kid. <laughs> well, well, there's no break. So like yeah. I would go babysit, right. And then you go home and you leave, you leave the kids there. You go work at a preschool and then you go home. And so there was always this break that I experienced. Well, with motherhood, there is no break. It's mm -hmm. just, you, you have this responsibility and it's a great responsibility. And when it actually soaked in, it was like, whoa. Yeah, it's drastically me, different. Yeah, it hit me really hard. <laughs> yeah, uh, some of the things were, uh, I remember not sleeping at all, not because the baby wasn't sleeping. Um, I'm thinking of Elliot when we first yeah, had him, yeah. but because I was terrified that he was just going to like Something stop gonna breathing to him. Yeah. <laughs> all the night. So I all night just looking, is he breathing? <laughs> is he breathing? Is he breathing? Yeah, I always thought motherhood would come so natural to me and it just, it just was a learning curve. And it went straight up the chart, you and know? It's, and it's still a learning curve every yeah. single time we have another child. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that I think was, yeah. another one is just realizing how how selfish we actually are and being in conflict with our own flesh to, to, to realize that maybe we wanted things to stay the way that they were, you know, or mm -hmm. I, I liked working, you know, and, and now things are different. <laughs> we didn't realize how much freedom we had. Sleeping in or going places on a whim or Only staying out Only having to like, take care of ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that, we could those, skip a meal if we wanted to. <laughs> yeah, we, and we could uh, travel easier. And there's just yeah. a lot of things that we realize like, wow, we are really selfish. Yeah. And it's actually the th thing that, one of the main things that God still uses our children to show us is how selfish we are and how foolish we are sometimes. Mm -hmm. He just reveals that stuff into us, which is really great. He sanctifies us through our, our parenting. No matter how hard the transition has been to parenthood, I don't regret it at all. I absolutely love being a parent and all, yeah. what I've learned and gained from it. Um, I, and the last thing I would say is been hard, was a hard transition. And it's something that we're probably going to learn how to do for the rest of our parenting careers is uh, <laughs> I mean, there's be, <laughs> being on the same page as parents. Yeah. We've gotten way better over the years, but there's always more same well, pageness. But, we well, and the thing is, is you can't avoid talking about those things. You have, like, you have to get on the same page because the kids know when you're not on the same page. They take advantage Other of people know when you're not on the same page. And it's just very obvious. It's not something that mm -hmm. you can hide or avoid or anything like that. Like there's just things about parenting that you have to talk about. And for those parents that are listening who probably feel that way, like, yeah, we're not on the same page. The most joy and excitement we experience is when we're the most in sync. Unity. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like parenting just is so much more joyful. But that requires one or both of us to, yeah. you know. Grow and mature grow, and change yeah. and uh, compromise. And, yeah. Um, but I like what you said earlier each other. <laughs> when we were talking about working together. Yeah. Um, is talking about um, not necessarily just getting my way or you getting your way, but saying, God, what do you want? Yeah. And us both aligning with that. Yeah. And going from there and talking about how it can actually look practically within our schedule and livelihood. All right. Question six, it says, uh, what are some positive resources you have found while, uh, finding healing with pornography? And, uh, you, there was, you read a couple. Yeah. When I was going books. through this journey, um, there was, a, there was two books specifically that I remember reading. The first one is a, a Christian perspective. The second one is a secular perspective, but they're both very good resources. And the first one's called wired for intimacy how pornography hijacks the male brain. And it's a Christian perspective book written by William Struthers. He's a professor of psychology at Wheaton College, where he teaches courses on behavioral neuroscience. And in this book, he literally breaks down how the, the human brain was created by God to work and what pornography does with it and how it creates pathways and um, and why it's so addictive. Like give you the science behind it. He, the science behind, yep. Well, and he also explains in it why those same responses that pornography plays on was made for marriage. Mm. 
and the dangers in it and why mm. it rewires it and, and, and tweaks it. And um, he doesn't give any excuses for it. He just says what's happening yeah. when we do that. And then the other one's called Treating Pornography Addiction, The Essential Tools for Recovery. And it was written by Dr. Kevin Skinner, a licensed marriage and family therapist and certified sexual addiction therapist. And he actually goes through similar things uh, in this book, but he actually gives process processes for the person addicted on how they can actually, mm. you know, work through it, writing journals and, and, and steps that they can take mm -hmm. to find freedom. And I thought that was, there was lots of really good stuff in that too. Cool. I'd like to share a resource that, um, doesn't have to deal with pornography per se, but I, it's a great resource for, mm -hmm. um, women and men, but has to do with sexual intimacy within marriage. And it was one of the first books I ever read about marriage, but it's called No More Headaches by Dr. Julie Slattery. And it was really really great book for putting your, um, your, uh, intimacy and in, in, mm. in a godly perspective. I remember you, you read that and had a pretty big, big breakthrough in your own yeah. way of thinking yeah. about uh, and, and for sex me, and marriage. Well, yeah, a big part of the struggle that I had was actually embracing sex and marriage and seeing it as a gift from God and all that. And so she gives really great, um, mm. personal testimonies, stories from other, other marriages and, I don't know. I just was really impacted by that book. So, does I feel like Julie has a few more books? Oh, she's got a whole ministry on it. It's called sex, yeah. yeah, it's called Authentic uh, Intimacy. Yeah, so I think people should check that out. She also has a podcast. Um, the last thing I would say is true biblical community. Oh yeah, that was huge for us. Being around other believers who are not, uh, and I'm not talking about the the common uh, accountability group where everyone struggles with the exact same thing and no one grows. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people that are walking in purity, that love you, are excited for you. Are, they're going to say the hard things. They're going to say the right things, the true they're things. They're going to exhort you. They're going to... Yeah, they're going to be like, why are you still doing this? Doing. Don't you remember that you're free? This is yeah. not a part of you. This is not who you are. Mm -hmm. Like, knock it off. Yeah. Like, that. that's what you. That's what we need men and, and women need it too. Mm -hmm. And so uh, getting in true biblical community that they have the, those men and women have the freedom to know you and to communicate to you and speak words of truth and exhortation into your life. Mm -hmm. All right. Next question. What has been the hardest lessons you've had to learn in your own lives and in marriage? Mm. Some of these are like kind of overlap, yeah. but it's just life in general, I guess. My, the first thing I wrote down is dying to self. I thought going to be sharing the blankets in bed. No, that was a hard <laughs> <just> one. <laughs> <laughs> we just didn't do it in the beginning. <laughs> uh, no, dying to self, uh, taking up my cross, realizing that it's not about me, that it's about God. Mm -hmm. It's about his son, Jesus, and uh, truly learning to be self-sacrificial, which yeah. is so hard because our flesh is not interested in that. <laughs> I think for me, it was um, just one of the hardest lessons I've had to learn in life is to stop waiting for change to happen and actually making mm -hmm. change happen. <laughs> like realizing that I'm the one, I'm the- No, no, the no, something's gonna happen soon. <laughs> we just, just wait here, something's oh. gonna happen to us. <laughs> Sometimes I, I I struggle with believing that if I yeah. just hold out long enough, something will change. <laughs> someone, Not me. Someone else, all, someone else. All I have to do, yeah. My whole environment <laughs> will adjust to, yeah. Um, one for me was um, realizing that my obedience to God is not contingent on my spouse's actions. Okay. I remember when you kind of learned this and then you shared it with me and I was impacted really, mm -hmm. really. Well, because often we think, well, she's not, you know, respecting me. So why would I love her as Christ loves the church, you know, or mm -hmm. vice versa? Like, well, he's not loving me mm -hmm. well, so why would I respect him? Mm -hmm. And that's just one common yeah. um, thread in marriage. But when you read the scriptures that are sp specifically talking to you, you know, like when I yeah. read Ephesians 5, 25 or any of the verses where it talks to me about, you know, living with my wife in an understanding way, mm -hmm. none of them are, if your wife does X, Y, Z, then you live with them in an understanding way. If but your wife- The problem with this though, is that the flesh is naturally prideful and arrogant. stubborn <laughs> and uh, just <laughs> our flesh wants justification. So they yeah. want- our flesh wants the other person to change first and then we'll do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And Christ comes in and says, nope. <laughs> well, and I'll say this, what, what got it for me was I realized that way of thinking, whether we like it or not, whether we have understood this or not, is a transactional relationship. Mm. It's what, not unconditional. Well, what it is, is you pay me this and I'll give you this. Mm. You do this for me and I will do this for you. That's a, that's, prostitution. That's not marriage. Hmm. Like my, I love my wife the way I'm called to love with my whole heart, whether or not she pays me for it, 
whether or not she gives me what I think I deserve for it, whether or not she does what even what she's called to do by God. That's my calling. Mm-hmm. She's not paying for my love. We've committed to love each other. Mm-hmm. This is not a transactional relationship. Yeah. And it goes both ways. Mm-hmm. Now, people often say whenever I would post something like that, there'd be people saying, well, it goes both ways. Of course it goes both ways, but (laughs) it's not required Mm -hmm. to go both ways for me to be obedient. My wife's not required to do anything for my obedience. Uh, And so, because one day we're going to stand before God, he's not going to look at me like, well, did so-and-so do it? Mm -hmm. He's going to look at us and say, did you Mm -hmm. do what I asked you to do? And so that's, that was a big thing for me. Mm. So uh, something else that I was thinking about is um, this is in my own personal life, but also in any thing that we've ever overcome as a couple, Aaron, but uh, realizing that even after overcoming sin, there will always be that temptation to oh, sin. Yeah. Cause I always wanted it to be like, it's yeah, gone. yeah, once you <laughs> overcome it, you're done. Like, let's move on to the next thing. But then there's this, there's the, there's this um, constant opportunity, temptation situation mm-hmm. that comes up where the, it rears its ugly head. And then you have to overcome it again, whether it's pride or mm-hmm. jealousy or anger or, you know, yeah, and we have to consistently be humble, consistently be in a repentant spirit. Yeah. Like, Lord, continue to cut this out of me. There was a couple like, times where I'm like, me. wait a minute, I thought I, <laughs> I thought I overcame that. I thought I passed that test, you know, but yeah, it's a continual process of growing. And it requires us to just realize who God is, that he's so good. Yeah. And, he, and think, be thankful that he's patient with us. Jeez, yeah. Because he's so patient. Um, the Bible actually says his patience and kindness leads us to repentance. Mm-hmm. That's just so cool mm-hmm. <laughs> that we, he's, because he's patient and kind, we're like, oh Lord, like, thank you. Mm-hmm. And please forgive me. Uh, question eight says this. Has this pregnancy been an easy one? Are they asking you? I mean, <laughs> it's been great. Man, oh, I've man. had no morning sickness. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for me, this is pregnancy number five and it has been hardest to date. <laughs> um, I've had more headaches. I've had more nausea, uh, lasting well into second trimester. And then yeah, usually night. you have a couple of weeks only. And yeah. Then... Usually I'm done by like 11 and 12 and second trimester is like heaven, but I, I've had a little bit of a rough time and, um, you're already getting uncomfortable. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm not that usually doesn't stuff. happen until almost the end. Yeah. But that's okay because I always like to put things in perspective. And I think there's some women who have even harder pregnancies and yep. I'm, so I, even though I might have uncomfortable nights or whatever I'm wrestling with. I'm just also very thankful that I'm able to carry this baby and Mm -hmm. looking forward to meeting her. So Mm -hmm. excited. Um, But yeah, I I wouldn't say that it's been an easy one. It also makes me confront my age because I feel older. I feel like, you know, when you, when you know, when you recognize that you're older, you like, you wake up and your back hurts a little bit or you just can't bend over all the way. You're like, wait a minute, I'm getting old. (laughs) So yeah, but we're excited. Like meet Edith. Yeah. March. So close. Okay. Uh, next question. It says, we are about to celebrate our one year wedding anniversary. Any suggestions? Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> don't forget the date. No. <laughs> yeah. Don't forget. Uh, you know, we, we, yeah, we've always kept our anniversaries low key. I think we've had some big like milestone anniversaries, like five and 10. Yeah. You know, so I think, but even then it's 15 is coming up mostly, um, mostly do dinner with some reflection and like, we'd mm. like to talk about how things have been going. A suggestion for them though, one year, which is really, it's a, it's a milestone. It's you're, you've spent 12 months as one, mm-hmm. you know, before that you were two individuals. Now you're a single unit. Uh, and so I, I would say, why don't you plan a, a date night and discuss what that year looked like for you guys, mm, like wins and, and losses even. Yeah, like, hey, we, yeah. yeah. And then, and, and do some visioning. Like what, what's the next 12 mm-hmm. months look like? What are we going to, what do we want to do in five years? What's God doing in our marriage? That's so good. Um, I would say this, um, come prepared to affirm one another. Yes. Because not just critical. You all, sometimes you can even go through highs and lows, but it all be about you and what you experience from your perspective. Um, but don't forget to lift up your spouse and mm-hmm. just be really grateful for having journeyed that together. Even if it was hard, because mm-hmm. we do learn as humans, <laughs> like whether it's, hard or blissful that we are doing it together. Yeah. Uh, This would be a perfect time to use our 52 day night conversation starters. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) (laughs) Because those talk about like future and what God's doing and, and what our our ministry is as a couple. Um, Okay. So what are some wild ways to experience an anniversary? I don't remember if this was an anniversary. 
I don't remember if this was an anniversary, but I took you on a surprise date uh, on a helicopter. That was really fun. Yeah. So yeah. That, that would be if you have access to a like local airport that does helicopter rides around, you know, some sort of scenery or something. That's a fun one. That was pretty exciting. Yeah. It was magical. This isn't super wild, but even something like rooftop dining, if you can, and if it's not snowing outside, um, <laughs> I'm just thinking like something different and special other than just yeah. the normal down the street. Right. Restaurant. There's like a restaurant in our town that um, certain times of the year, there's a rooftop yeah. experience. You just go on top of it and there's a few d tables and you have yeah. to reserve it in a week in advance. And uh, those are fun because yeah. you see the whole city. and Or go to a place that you guys have talked about going to that you haven't. Yeah. You know, things that would really bless each other. Uh, make it make it something where you guys get to experience uh, and talk about who you are now. And take a selfie. Yeah. Because those are fun. <laughs> and post it and tag <laughs> at Marriage After God. Yeah. <laughs> okay, last question. How do you juggle the time needed to meet all the demands of life? Kids, marriage, job, church? Okay, wait. I just had this question yesterday. I was asking myself, how do I do this? <laughs> I ask it to myself, like, moment by moment. Like, what am I doing? How does, how does all this work? So what's the truth? Well, I, I remember a, a drive a long time ago where we were driving up the Cascade yeah. um, road to get I to remember. the lakes. <laughs> and I and you were asking me this question, like, how do we do all this stuff? That I was, think we were like, writing I think a I book. I just and, had Olive. Yeah, we just had a, our, our third, our second. And I think we were writing a book and th and we had just moved. And like there was all this stuff going yeah. on in our life. And we're like, how do we do all this stuff? And I just realized, I said, we can't. That's the point. Mm -hmm. that we're only capable of so much mm -hmm. we're as limited. humans. Yeah. God made it that way on purpose to show us our need for something beyond us. Mm -hmm. We need God. He is the one that completes us. He's the one that we, Christ says we can do nothing without him, right? So, you know, we, once you realize that you're limited, you, first of all, you, you start forgiving yourself. Like, oh, I actually can't do everything perfectly. Yeah. I can't have it all put together. I can't have the perfect Instagram account and have the, all the laundry put away and be sane. Yeah. <laughs> like it, some stuff... If you put energy in one place, and this was- It's got to be taken from the other. It yeah. has to be taken from somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and so the way Jennifer and I have navigated this is in seasons. Yeah, we're seasonal creatures. <laughs> so there, are, if there's a season where we're working harder, like writing a book, and we get with the whole family together, and we're like, we're going to be in this season for three weeks, four weeks, whatever it is, two months maybe, and it's going to be different. There's some things are going to go by the wayside. There's going to mm -hmm. be more dishes in the sink at, at times that the laundry is not going to be as perfect. The mm -hmm. house isn't going to be as well put together. Not that we don't care about those mm -hmm. things, but in that season, more energy is going to these other things. Like we may not go on date nights. Mm -hmm. We may not have, you know, tons of people over mm -hmm. in that season. And there's all kinds of different seasons. Like I'm just thinking I'm going to be in postpartum again come spring. And so we'll have to have another conversation with the family about yeah. what that looks like. Yeah, because you're going to be wanting needing to rest, mm -hmm. and we have a new baby, and mm -hmm. we're going to have to transition the, the other four kids and learning what yeah. it's like to be older siblings again to a new infant. Yeah, so we're going to have to the, things will have to go out the window mm -hmm. for a little while. Now we don't do things permanently. We always ha we try and have like goals in mind, like hey, this season's going to end around this time, and we'll try and get back to a different pattern. I would say that things don't just get toss out the window. They just get put down until someone can right. get to it. <laughs> just want to clarify. Well, because, because th there could be this idea of like, well, I can't, I'm, I'm just going to put this very important thing away forever because mm -hmm. I want to do this other thing over here. And we just have to recognize the things that are priority. I was just going to use that word prioritize because there are things in our life that could be put down that don't need to be picked up right away. There's other things that absolutely cannot right. be neglected. Our marriage cannot be neglected. Our children cannot be neglected. Yeah. Our church shouldn't be, but it could be in different ways. Yeah. So like maybe you're not as um, involved in every single thing every week, all yeah. the time for or, a season. Or maybe you have to miss a Sunday. I just had to miss a Sunday because our kids were sick. Right. And it makes me not want to miss again because I feel like I missed out. But just you got to talk to your spouse about what's a priority and what's not. And mm -hmm. be, being okay and giving yourself grace for the things that aren't and knowing that you'll get to it when you get to it. Um, and there's also ways of, of changing those things. So like, I would never want you to think that um, church can go on the back burner, mm -hmm. uh, fellowship with other believers. But if you can't be the one going out and going and pursuing and have, you know, doing that sort of thing, then just let your community know, Hey, I'm going to be down a little bit. I'd love to have you come over, Yeah. but let's make it low key or only for an hour or, and so you're still connecting and mm -hmm. you're still making those things priorities 
but in a different way. Mm -hmm. I will say this. I think um, when we as people desire to do certain things, we really struggle to say no, or I'm not going to do that anymore. And actually letting go of it when, when that's what God's asking you to do. Um, And so that's a heart check. We talked about heart checks earlier and just evaluating your life. I think it's really important that we are willing to keep our hands and hearts open to God and saying, God, what do you want? What is your will? What do you, Mm -hmm. what do you desire for my life? And if it's not this thing over here that I've been pursuing, help me get rid of it because I don't have any peace right now trying to spin right. all these plates. Um, and sometimes it's just a matter of mm-hmm. being able to let go. Yeah. And I think we're just in our, our nature. We want to fill every gap yeah. in our life. Like if we don't have this, we're not doing this, 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 and this, we're mm-hmm. not successful or mm-hmm. we're doing something wrong when there's definitely seasons that need to happen of rest. Yeah. Right. Uh, so that, I want to make one more point on this. Um, if we could juggle everything and get do no everything arms. done, yeah. <laughs> Jug- no, if we can juggle everything and do everything perfectly fine and have this perfect life, we would have no need for Jesus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are flawed people. We are human. We are incapable of doing everything. Mm-hmm. Um, we need people. We need rest. And we also need to be content mm-hmm. and um, wise. Mm-hmm. I know that we're we're not capable of everything. And there's definitely things that we need to say no to and put down and walk away from and or put in the back burner. And if you're that person that has done that really well, and maybe you don't have a perfect life, but kind of like what Aaron just mentioned, like you have things put in order and you prioritized and you're doing it well, and it's because you're leaning on God, don't forget to give him the glory. Let it be a testimony in your life of of how you're able to do so much because it is only of him. Yeah. And when you get uh, brought low and you have to do less because of sickness or pregnancy Mm -hmm. or whatever, life changes, give God the glory and say, thank you, Lord, for slowing me down. Thank you, Lord, for this, this opportunity or this, Mm -hmm. this burden or this suffering. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Because we're told to be thankful for, for all things and in all things. Yeah. I also want to make a note that, you know, everyone's got plates that they're spinning or whatever you said about juggling. And we have to remember that, um, People are all experiencing different things at the same time. And we need to be able to give our friends and our family Mm -hmm. and people close to us grace when they don't meet an expectation we had or something falls through the cracks or, or, or something happens and it hurts your feelings. You can communicate that to them and you can tell them, but just make sure you also realize the things that they're going through. I think that's really important. Mm -hmm. Uh, And if you can help them, (laughs) help them. Do what they're doing. Yeah. And support them in that. To reiterate, this is something that Jennifer and I have to constantly walk through. Yeah. You know, are we doing too little? Are we doing too much? Mm-hmm. What needs to give? What needs to be picked up? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's stuff that we're, I mean, we're not immune at all to any of this stuff. This definitely gets me excited for um, having that end of the year conversation with you, Aaron, about just reprioritizing and envisioning what next mm-hmm. year is going to look like, talking about how this last year went. Um, every year we kind of have this conversation where we we talk about goals that we have or things that we want to pursue. And it gets me excited for kind of just reorganizing our life and seeing what God has for us. It's going to be fun. Yeah. Um, before we go and jump into prayer, because we always do that, I just want you to let everyone know what's coming. Uh, yeah, we're going to be taking a break. From Sorry. The, from the podcast. <laughs> Speaking of, of... I feel like I set that up for good news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, we're going to be taking a break. And I want to encourage everyone listening, if they made it this far in the episode, which is awesome. You, you rock. <laughs> uh, spend the next month, month and a half going through old episodes. Mm-hmm. We have almost 100 episodes. Wow. Well. Maybe even 100. <laughs> <laughs> and so there's a lot of episodes they can go through and uh, they can listen to those, download or those old episodes. Take a break with us and be really excited for when we jump back on in January. Yeah. Spend time with your family. Yeah. Uh, listen to someone else's podcast. There's a bunch of good ones out mm-hmm. there. Um, and so we're going to come back on sometime in January, maybe even February, but I think January is when we're going to do it. So uh, we love you all. We thank you for uh, going f- with us this whole time. And uh, we just want to pray. We're actually going to pray for you. Dear Lord, thank you for all these couples who are listening today. Lord, I pray that you would pour your spirit into their homes. 
Show them your plan for their life. Remind them that you have created them to worship you and to serve you. I pray that they would have a deeper understanding of who you are. Fill them with your peace and love and give them a deep and lasting desire for your word. Draw them closer and closer to each other and to you, Lord. Bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for listening. We love you all and uh, we'll see you in the new year. Have an awesome holiday season. Did you enjoy today's show? If you did, it would mean the world to us if you could leave us a review on iTunes. Also, if you're interested, you can find many more encouraging stories and resources at marriageaftergod.com and let us help you cultivate an extraordinary marriage. 